Hello, and welcome to a holly jolly episode of the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast. I am your wassled, and yeah, I'm just wassled host, <laughs> Devo. How you doing, Kells? I'm doing all right, man. <laughs> could you could you explain what kind of host you are again? <laughs> I'm a holly jolly host. No, it because that? it's Christmas time. <laughs> I have a holly jolly Christmas. Crim- cr- <laughs> no. I, I think he's asking about Happy- the wassail. Yeah. Wassail. Oh. Uh, wassail is a fine spirit that was handed out to carolers in the back in the day. You know, here we go a wassailing, so fair to be seen. That Christmas carol. Never heard it. Well, wassail was... It exists. I know it does. Can you help me out I with believe. this one, Neil? Uh, yeah. So wassail is actually a drink. It's like a it's like a mulled wine kind of cocktail. Oh, okay. That you would hand out to, to people over that season, you know. So... How, is everybody in the Hanukkah spirit? I, sure, absolutely. Yeah, they force you to be. They do. <laughs> they hit you with it like the day after the day after Halloween. They start putting up Christmas <laughs> decorations, or at least things to sell in the stores it's here okay. in the U.S. I don't want to spoil the magic for our listeners, but we're actually recording this on December first. And I'm, all, I'm already sick of Christmas carols. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere I go, oh, I love man, Christmas carols. Every, yeah, every last one of them. Well, we have a... Of, I was kind of still sick of them from last year. Wow. Well, I'm kind of... An 11-month carryover? <laughs> What's to hit you really hard last year, Neil? No kidding. Well, we have a special guest today. Very we special. have Emily. Ah, humbug. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in the in the Devo household, I'm propping up the Christmas spirit along with our son. He is very into the Christmas thing. And well, mainly the present thing. <laughs> So that's what he was telling me a little while ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Emily's uh, providing the proper counterbalance is to the season. It's all about balance. It is. Yin and yang. Emily seems like the very practical type to me. <laughs> she is. She is. She is much less wassled than, than I am. I think everybody is. Well, that's true. I'm I'm awfully wassily. So, enough of this wassel talking. Neil, are you reading questions today? I'm expecting to, yeah. Well, let's get to it. All right. Well, obviously, all this Christmas talk means that this is our first annual Christmas episode. Hanukkahsimus. E, well, yes. Yeah. Chris, Chris Hanukkahsimus. I have to be honest and say that I was kind of focusing on the Christmas thing. And oh. uh, now that I mention it, I didn't actually look, I didn't do anything with the Kwanzaa or Hanukkah thing. So I apologize. That's our Christmas episode, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just was kind of, kind of laser focused on the Christmas thing, I guess. And, and neglecting our, our multi-ethnic and multicultural friends. So I apologize for that. However, it's okay, Neil. However, I think I have a few fun questions and probably some that you're not going to like much. But I will say I did stay away from the kind of sciencey questions more than I usually do. Yes, <laughs> kind of kind of tried to stick more with the uh, you know, the tradition and um, pop culture types of things. So I guess we'll we'll see how we go. So you're saying there's a chance? I do think I think there's a chance <laughs> one of the three of you is going to win this 
this episode. Pretty good chance, even. <clears throat> yep. Uh, thirty-three point three three. Continuing, obviously. Well, chance. maybe I'm, for I'm each actually, of us individually. I'm actually kind of giving Emily like a fifty percent chance, and Kel's a thirty, and and you a twenty. What? Man. I mean, just based on past performance. Because of. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think you might be overestimating my Christmas knowledge. Uh, well, that's true. You are kind of a kind of a Scrooge like me. Well, I, I am too. And you are not. You're the, hap- You're the happiest person I know. It takes wassail for me to feel this good. <laughs> Pretty sure you made that up 40 minutes ago. but He <laughs> really didn't. It is a song. <laughs> It is a thing. And it was a drink that was legitimately passed out. Oh, man. The 50 percenter is giving me the, is backing me up. So you know it's <laughs> right. <laughs> no, okay. uh, my mom has a lot of Christmas spirit, so we'll see how I do. So she's got enough for the both of you? Or? Uh, and another person on top of it. There you go. Yes. Has down mito- mitochondrially. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mitochlorianly. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Just so you know, I did not touch on the Star Wars Christmas episode. Your Christmas. Uh, oh, man. I didn't see it. I didn't either. Everyone but David thanks you. I, I am locked <laughs> in on that, man. <laughs> so I have six six categories uh four questions each each question is worth 10 points with a few bonus points here and there and then a final question where you can wager any or all your points so let's get started the first category Mm -hmm. first category is the ghost of christmas past which is kind of a history question or history category question one what's the name of the indigenous mid Midwinter festival celebrated by ancient Nordic people. It's a four, <laughs> uh, four letter word, and it's one that we still, you still hear every year. Locked in. All right, locked, locked in. in. All right, apparently that was a good clue. <laughs> uh, Kels? Well, I scratched out my original answer. I was going to say Sam Hain reloaded, but. Um, <laughs> Forever! <laughs> I went with Noel. Okay. Emily? I went with Yule. Oh, better Devo? answer. Probably. That's so much better. <laughs> I went with Leon spelled backwards. Uh, Noel. <laughs> the correct answer is Yule. Question two. A picture of the British monarch in an 1848 illus- issue of the Illustrated London News was responsible for popularizing the Christmas tree. Who was that British ruler? Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Um, Emily? I said Queen Victoria. You know? Queen Victoria. Else. Vicky, Vicky. Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria. <laughs> I guess when that uh, issue of the Illustrated London News came out, everybody was like, oh, Christmas trees are cool. We're going to go make our own. And so that's how it became a thing. Well, huh. if the Queen does it. Yep. The Queen does it. it must well, be cool. if Vicky, Vicky does it, it's pretty bad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Question three in Ghost of Christmas Past. What group of people originally believed that mistletoe could make people and animals fertile? Which is the reason why we hang it up and kiss under it these days. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. All right, David, why don't you go first? Well, I immediately regretted my answer after I locked in. Immediately. I said the Druids. Okay. Emily? Uh, that seemed like something that the Romans would do. Okay. So I said Romans. Kells. I said the clergy. The correct answer is the Druids. Oh, smack! 
I thought you regretted it. I, I don't anymore. <laughs> I've had a sudden change of heart. <laughs> so here's a here's a trivia nugget for you. Mistletoe is a parasite. It's a parasitic plant. It gets all know that. energy out of the the mostly oak trees, I think, that it that it lives in. You knew that, Emily? I did. Oh. I found that out like a, a like a week ago. That it's a parasite? Mm-hmm. You didn't find I didn't out know any of this. You didn't find out the druid part, though, huh? No, that was left out. So, it seemed like a druidic thing to do. Well, I'm pretty sure that in D&D, um, like the original Dungeons & Dragons way back when, that it says mm-hmm. in, the, in the player's handbook that the uh, druids have a special affinity for mistletoe. I have played first edition one time. Ah. That's one time more than me. All right, question four in The Ghost of Christmas Past. In 1957, a priest in the Diocese of Little Rock pat- patented an invention to automate the creation of what confection? I'm locked in. Locked in. I have no idea. Mm. Automated. Mm. Okay, I'm, I'm locked in. Okay, Kels, what did you lock in with? Nah, I just said uh, whipped cream. Okay. <laughs> Devo? <laughs> like cool whip? Cool whip? <laughs> yeah. Was that your answer, Devo? Oh, not at all. My answer is uh, candy canes. Okay. Emily? Uh, I was waffling a few... Between a few things, but I went with cookies. The correct answer is the candy cane. Up until then, they were twisted and and crooked by hand. Devo, do you have our scores at the end of the first round? Uh, Devo has 30. Emily has 20. And Kells has 10. Category two, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. This is about... Mm. Grinchy people in the world. Question one. Which U.S. city banned the celebration of Christmas from the years 1659 through 1681 because the Puritans didn't allow exchanging gifts, dressing up, or feasting? Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Okay, Emily? I said Plymouth. Okay. Uh, Kells? I also went with Plymouth. Plymouth. First answer was Boston. I scratched that I was wondering if that was too late. They just did not like to have fun at all. (laughs) Well, if you looked at their outfits, you'd understand. (laughs) Well, they're wool and buckly. There's so much itchy going on. Right. Question two. In 1957, a Los Angeles DJ refused to play any songs from this artist's Christmas album on the grounds that exposing youths to that kind of music would be like, quote, having Tempest Storm give Christmas gifts to my kids. And just in case you didn't know, Tempest Storm was a famous burlesque dancer at the time. Locked in. The youths. Locked in as well. That's the second 1957 question. I know. I realized that it was totally a coincidence. Okay. Um, yeah, I wrote something down. I'm like, that. okay, David. What? Oh, what's your answer? Oh, okay. Uh, Elvis. <laughs> Still playing a trivia game. Oh, what? Right? Oh, yeah. Uh, too much wassail. Um, Elvis. I went with Elvis Presley. Okay, Kels. I went with Mr. Blue Suede Shoes, Elvis Presley. I said Elvis as well. The correct answer is Elvis. It had such subversive songs as White Christmas and Blue Christmas and um, I forget what else. Green Christmas? It was yellow. (laughs) I I thought it was kind of funny that he had two (laughs) two different colors. Christmas. (laughs) Christmas. Okay, let's not go there. Without you. 
You can stop that anytime. <laughs> yeah, I only get like 10 seconds before we have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Question three and how the Grinch stole Christmas. It seems like every year there are reports of thefts from collection bins for the Toys for Tots program. What organization runs Toys for Tots? And for a bonus two points, what decade was Toys for Tots started in? I'm locked in. Okay, I'm locked in. Uh, locked in. Anything else? Uh, the Marine Corps for my answer, and I said the 50s. Okay. Emily? I didn't know it all, so I just guessed. I said Salvation Army and the 70s. Okay. Dave, uh, The United States Marine Corps. And I said the 30s as my bonus. Technically, the correct answer is the U.S. Marine Corps Reserve. Um, but I will give you both credit for the Marine Corps. I know that's, that's what I thought it was, too. Um, and it was started in 1947. Oh. So no bonus points. Ells and David got the right answer. Okay, question four. This is actually about the Grinch. Oh. According to the according to the song, "You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch." What has Mr. Grinch got in his soul? There's three acceptable answers. And for a bonus, what is the length of the pole with which the singer wouldn't touch the Grinch? There's three different times when he says something about Grinch's soul. Uh, I'm going to lock in because I'm just drawing a blank. Locked in. I'm locked in. Okay. Um, Emily, what do you have? Uh, I said meanness and a 39 and a half foot pole. Okay. Uh, Kels? I undershot the <laughs> the length. Um, I went with I think it was garlic. Oh, and I said I said twelve. Okay, Deva. Well, I think I overshot the length. Uh, I said spiders in your soul, and uh, but I love Kels's answer, and I said ninety nine <laughs> and a half foot pole. Wow, that's a really long pole. It's a very long poll. Yeah. Very. All right. Well, the correct answer is garlic or gunk or an appalling dump heap. Oh, great answer, Kels. Good job. And the length of the poll is 39 feet, 6 inches. So Emily gets the <laughs> bonus. Well played, Emily. The minute she said it, I just heard they got third and out of the half foot pole. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So after round two, what are we looking at for scores, Davo? Uh, Davo is still in the lead with 50. Uh, Emily has 32. Kells has 40. It is what, Neil? It is anybody's game. Yeah. <laughs> Category three is White Christmas, about snow and other things. Question one, what is the largest snowflake ever recorded according to the Guinness Book of World Records? Within, what? Within two inches. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Largest snowflake? Yep. Within two inches. Within two inches. That's a gargahugic snowflake. Locked in. What? Or <laughs> you either know it or you don't, and if you don't, you just guess. That's true. Which one did you knew it? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so at that point, just guess, and what does it matter? Yeah, you're right. I'm locked in too. Me too. Why not? I'm st <laughs> All right. I like this attitude. <laughs> Davo. Me? Okay. Five inches. Okay. Uh, Emily? I said six and a half inches. Okay. Kells? I said eight. 
So back in 1887, there were apparently a number of individuals who reported seeing snowflakes in the range of 15 inches. And so, so here's, here's why I specifically said that this was according to the Guinness book, because they've certified that there's really no corroborating uh, evidence apart from these people reporting that, because I mean, how, how would you have corroborating evidence now? But I did right. some research into it and meteorologists say it's certainly possible that you could have snowflakes at large. We don't typically see that, but it is theoretically possible. And so that is the correct answer is 15. You'll see it, you'll see it all over the place as if it's just a plain fact without any kind of hedging. So, so imagine add, catching that one on your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking at that size, that rib on the Flintstone car. <laughs> rather than being a snowflake, it's a snow plate. Ah, 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 I like it. They actually referred to it as being like pie tin sized or something like that. Okay, question two in White Christmas. Multiple choice question for you. According to the website snowcrystals.com, because there is actually a website called snowcrystals.com. <laughs> what are you saying, man? There are 35 different types of snowflakes. Which of the following is not a type of snowflake? A stellar dendrite, a radiating plate, isolated bullet, or cubic rosette? Man, these names could have been in the East West Bowl. Quack <laughs> <laughs> Like psychedelic blimp. Locked in. <laughs> Spiraling in, right? Too late, university. <laughs> Isolated bullet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm locked in as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm locked in. <laughs> okay, Emily, what was your answer? Uh, I said B, radiating plate. Okay. Kels? I said D. I don't. Was Rosemary's baby? What was it? Cubic again? Rosette. <laughs> Rosemary's baby. I was gonna. I was gonna ask you what your what your thinking was on that, but I. I guess I'll just pass. Dave, yeah, yeah, just. I said a spiraling dendrite. Yeah, I said stellar dendrite, but it doesn't really matter because they're both. Both of them are wrong. <laughs> Either way, it's I. Don't, so here's the same thing about snowflakes. Snowflakes are, yeah. regardless of the exact form that the snow crystal uh, takes, they're pretty much always uh, hexagonal, which would eliminate cubic rosettes from being a possible snowflake size type. I knew it. Apparently you didn't know it because you answered the wrong. <laughs> i uh, kind of confused now. <laughs> so, so Kel's got it right for I the should. wrong reasons, I guess. It's, so Rosemary in time was... That was, was right. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm pretty sure that's the, uh, uh, the most sciencey question on here. So uh, we'll, we can move on from there. I'll take it. So speaking of White Christmas, the song... White Christmas won an Oscar for the best original song. What movie was the song introduced in? And for a bonus two points, what year was that movie released? This feels tricksy. Locked in? <laughs> I'm locked in too. I'm locked in as well. Okay, Devo, what's your answer? Well, I know this is a trick. I feel like, I feel like I'm, Fallen into your trap. So I said White Christmas, 1957, because we haven't had a 1957 question yet in this category. <laughs> Emily? Uh, I didn't have any idea. So I just said It's a Wonderful Life, okay. which I'm fairly certain is wrong. And just because it's done us good, I said 1957. <laughs> Kills? 
I also went with White Christmas, and I said 1951. Uh, so you're right. This was kind of a trick question. Obviously, there was this, uh, a movie called White Christmas that featured the songs kind of based on this song, I guess. But mm-hmm. a few years before that, there was another Bing Crosby movie, um, which basically focused on this guy who was setting up a his, setting up a, a kind of a restaurant or uh, facility in his house that was only going to be open on holidays and he called it the holiday Inn. and the movie was called holiday Inn, Mm -hmm. and it was released in 1942. So there was a song basically for every holiday and white Christmas was the one that was written for Christmas. And uh, it was so popular that they, a few years later, they made an actual white Christmas movie. (laughs) Holiday Mm -hmm. Inn. So you may not know this, or you may know this, depending on how much you know about best-selling singles ever, but Bing Crosby's version of White Christmas is the best-selling single ever with about 50 million sold. Still? Yeah. Wow, 50 million. Now, another Christmas song by Bing Crosby is the third best-selling single of all time with about 30 million sales. Which song is that? Is that the next question? Is this yeah, question, it's question four? four? Sorry. Uh, Locked in. Locked in. Man, I know I should have bought that Bing Crosby greatest hit. Uh-huh. Roll the dice. How wrong can you be? One hundred percent. I mean, you could be pretty wrong. This is true. <laughs> There's degrees <laughs> of wrongness. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in the most basic sense okay. you're either 100 or zero percent wrong <laughs> but it, but i mean but i mean you got to yeah. say that like if you named a christmas song you would be less wrong than if you named like super freak that would be really really wrong that's true <sighs> but that would be really cool if he did it first that would be and rick james just remade it <laughs> that would be up oh, that would be amazing i'm locked in okay Kels, tell me you said super free. Uh, well, <laughs> after after our last little bit of conversation, but I went with have a holly jolly Christmas. Okay, Emily. I said let it snow. Okay, Dave. Oh. I said let little drummer boy. Uh, you're thinking of the the duet he did with David Bowie. David Bowie. It's a great song, but not yeah. the right answer. The correct answer is Silent Night. Huh. That was not a good category oh, yeah. <laughs> at all. It was a, for any of us. Low scoring, I would say. <laughs> as low as you can get <laughs> and still call it scoring. Somebody scored. They, uh, Kel's got one answer, right? I got one. Yeah, by virtue yeah. of Rosemary's Baby. <laughs> so the quick score update. Kel's and Dave are now tied at 50. Emily is bringing up the rear with 32. Okay, our next category is It's a Wonderful Life. So I'm going to give you some lyrics, and you need to tell me what wonderful song the lyrics are from. The moon is right, the spirit's up, we're here tonight, and that's enough. Locked in. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Okay, Kels? I guess let it snow. Okay, Emily? I also said let it snow. Devo. Uh, put a little love in your heart. The <laughs> wonderful Christmas song that has those lyrics is called Wonderful Christmas Time by Sir Paul McCartney. <sighs> so the songs have wonderful in the title? That one did. <laughs> oh, you cagey, cagey man. Well, I did say they were wonderful <laughs> Christmas songs. I practically gave you the name oh. of that one. I was in quality. I wouldn't have guessed that anyway. No, ever. Me neither. It was a terrible Christmas song. <laughs> it's. I saw. It's really. I saw on one list, it was like the ninth best Christmas song of all time, and then I saw someone else saying that it was not only the worst Christmas song of all time, but possibly <laughs> the worst song of all time, which I kind of agree with. Yeah, that song is bad. Bad. <clears throat> 
<laughs> Matt, see, you're a, mm. Moving on. <laughs> okay, so here's here's another lyric song. This is uh, another set of lyrics. This is the last one. There'll be parties for hosting, marshmallows for toasting, and caroling out in the snow. There'll be scary ghost stories and tales of the glories of Christmases long, long ago. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Uh, I'm locked in. Okay. What are you locked in with, Emily? I can't remember the title of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I went with Have a Merry Little Christmas. Okay. Kels? And everyone telling you be of good cheer. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Okay. Ava? Winter Wonderland. It is the most wonderful time of the year. See, it was another wonderful Christmas song. Gotcha. <laughs> See how it worked? <laughs> With it. Okay. Now that we set the pattern for that, we're going to move away from that pattern and <laughs> go to the movie that this category is named after. For five points each, how many Oscars was It's a Wonderful Life nominated for? And how many did it win? You don't need to know what they are, just how many there were. And I'll, I'll give you... Uh, I'll give you a range of one. Okay. I'm locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Deva? I went with one Oscar and it didn't win a darn thing. Okay. Kels? I went with five and it won two. Okay. Emily? I went with seven and it won three. Because okay. I have no idea. So, <laughs> me. Kels and Emily each got. 10 because the correct answer was it was nominated for six and it won one. So I'm not going to give you the range for the winning just for the, for the other one. Oh, so you only got five each then. It was five points each. It was nominated for best picture, best <laughs> director, best actor, best film editing, and best sound editing, but it didn't win any of those. Uh, Kels, do you know what movie won like four of those that year? You probably don't know what year, year that was. What what year did it? You know what you know what year it came uh, out? I do. It was nineteen forty six. Forty six. Uh might be out of my range in that one. Um you said one four of those. Could it have been um it happened one night? No, that was that was way earlier. Okay, I think that was in the '30s, wasn't it? Sounds mm -hmm. about right. It was the the best years of our lives. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna get that one. It won picture, director, actor, and editing. So interestingly, what it won for was a technical achievement award because a guy named Russell Shearman developed a new method of simulating falling snow on motion picture sets. <laughs> Oh, wow. Do you know what they did up until then? No. Asbestos. Buckets. <laughs> Asbestos. <laughs> no, they actually painted cornflakes white and sprinkled those on people. But the problem with that was it was so loud when people were walking around on it that they had to dub oh the dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy developed a a new compound which consisted of water soap flakes something called fomite in sugar huh. to, to make a realistic looking snow well actually i don't know how real realistic it was but it was better than cornflakes apparently <laughs> more realistic than a giant <laughs> cereal. i just picture i just picture all these <laughs> these people on the set with a little tiny paintbrush painting all these cornflakes <laughs> I think I would just dump a bucket of paint on them. Then they get too that gloopy. Makes, makes more sense. But to paint them individually would be. <laughs> All right. Question four, and it's a wonderful life. For five points each, name the town in It's a Wonderful Life and the name that the town would have been if George Bailey had never been born. And for a bonus, what state was the town in? Oh, come on. Have you seen the movie? 
once. Oh, well. I'm very that's much. going to make it harder. I'm not a big Frank Capra fan. They had a, a little trivia nugget about Frank Capra. Is his movies tended to be that kind of uplifting, some would say schmaltzy movies. And he, it was derisively called Capricorn. <laughs> he said that this was one of his, or I think he said it was his actual personal favorite among all the films that he directed. And that he screened it for his family every Christmas. He was also the director of The Best Years of Our Lives that won so many Oscars that year. Hold up, so he... He won both of those. Oh, I mean, he got nominated for two movies. Yeah, I'm locked in. Nice. I have. I'm locked in too. So little clue. I only know the town just from like watching stuff over the years. I've never seen the movie. Really? Never seen it. It's a good movie. How do you know? You've only it's... seen it once. I liked it when I saw it. <laughs> it's Even it's not true. No, you know, it's not your bag. It's not my bag. It's well made. It's got good acting. Um, it's a nice story, but it's mm-hmm. it crosses the line into schmaltz for me. Gotcha. Locked in. Okay, Davo. Give us your best guess. Springfield. Okay. And the town would have been named Bumbleburg. <laughs> I don't know. I really have no idea, but I thought it was in Pennsylvania. Well, I just throw out the bonus. Emily? I couldn't remember the actual name of the town for the life of me. So I just said Browning. Uh, it was called Pottersville, and it was in New York. Kels? I guess... Um... Bedford Falls for the actual name. I had no idea what it would have been called, so I just wrote Whoville. Yeah. And um, I think it was in Pennsylvania. All right. The town name was Bedford Falls. If George Bailey had never been born, it would have been called Pottersville. And it was in New York State. Oh, so Emily got seven and Kells got five. And how much did they... Oh, yeah, I remember. I remember. Zero. <laughs> Big old goose egg. <laughs> the second you said Bedford Falls, I was just <laughs> so frustrated. Just a trivia nugget that would probably never, ever come up anywhere. When they were trying to figure out what the set should look like, Capra went to Seneca Falls, New York, and so Bedford Falls is based very... Loosely on Seneca Falls. Scores. Davo's score hasn't changed for two rounds. He's feeling good about that. Davo has 50. Emily has 44. And Kells jumped ahead with 70. All right. Category five is called Frosty the Snowman. Question one. The world's largest snow person was built in Maine in 2008. How tall was she within 20 feet? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and I'll tell you, this, this isn't kind of the traditional American, you know, three balls of snow stacked on top of each other. She was, she was constructed. Oh. Locked in. I'm locked in, too. What the hey? I'm locked in. Okay. Devo? 250 feet. Okay. Emily? I said 68 feet. Kells? I said 65. What? Correct answer, correct answer was 122 feet, which is just a <laughs> much shorter than the Statue of Liberty. She had, girl. she had five car tires painted red for a mouth, eight pairs of skis for eyelashes, and her arms were two 30-foot spruce trees. Someone had way too much time on their hands. Yes, they did. So for those of you keeping track at home, that's the ninth question in a row I've missed. 
<laughs> what did you guess on that? Oh, what, 250 feet. It was ridiculous. Two, oh, hey, yeah, oh Dave, so, Dave, 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 you know what? I hate to contradict yeah. you. I hate to contradict yeah. you, but you missed the last question of round two. So I think that's... Oh, that would be 10. Yeah. 10 question. <laughs> Thanks. Very helpful, Neil. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Number 10. I, you know, I'm, a, I'm a stickler for accuracy. You totally are. Totally. You're a stickler for something. <laughs> okay, I, I have a good feeling about this one, Dave. I think you're going to get this one. All right. Let's see. Question two in Frosty the Snowman. What comic strip often portrays snow people in a variety of gruesome deaths? Locked in. Locked in. Is that what comic? Comic strip. Comic strip. By the way, I feel you're a little un-American if you don't get this one. Just a titch. So, Kels, if you don't get this one, you're getting deported. (laughs) That's cool. You don't get deported for a titch. It's 2018. We don't tolerate titches. Up in here. <laughs> yeah, titches get snitches. Right? Titches get stitches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, I'm really drawing a blank. I got nothing. Well, if you don't get this right, the terrorists win. <laughs> well, that's why I'm counting on you two to get it right. We got your back. Never leave a Thank Kells you. behind. <laughs> <laughs> Although we will catch up a bit um, if you miss this, which would be good for us. I'm, I'm, I'm locked in. Okay, Kels, I'll put you out of your misery. What, what was your guess? Appreciate it. I can only think of like the front page of the comic strip. Pretty sure it wasn't Beetle Bailey or uh, Kathy or Ziggy. Um, or was it the Family Circle or Garfield? So I went with Peanuts. <laughs> Although I remember no snowmen and peanuts. Hmm. But I want peanuts. Okay. With a variety of gruesome deaths and peanuts. Could happen. <laughs> <laughs> Emily? I said Calvin and Hobbes. Devo? I also said Calvin and Hobbes. Correct answer is... I mean the prequel to Fight Club? Yes. <laughs> Correct answer is Calvin and Hobbes. Ha 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 ha! All right. Good job, David. <laughs> Sorry, Kels. I felt good. I felt real good. It's, it's all good. Okay, question three in Frosty the Snowman. By the early 1930s, the snowman had become a commonplace had become commonplace in ads for many major manufacturers of what product? What category of product? By the 30s? Yeah. A manufact- this is a manufactured product. It's a, well, I don't want to mislead you by saying manufactured. It's not like made in a factory, but it is a man-made product. Locked in. Mm. I'm locked in. I have my spidey senses tingling. I'm locking in with this, but I have another thought. So if I'm locked in. But I got another thought. Okay. Kels? Um, I'm in the same boat as Davo. I, I wrote down top hats, but I was, a part of me thinks it might be like, you know, like a pipe. Okay. Emily? I said ice. Oh, that's a good answer. Like refrigeration? That's a great answer. That's a really good answer. Davo? See, I wrote down pipes, but I was wondering if it wasn't like coal. Like for the, n- <laughs> for the you know, like chunk chunk yeah. coal, you know, like right. a briquette. I think the nose is the only part that isn't made with coal. Yeah, that's a carrot. That's a carrot tree. I don't know, but my answer is pipes, smoking pipes. I, I was kind of hoping that the early '30s would be a little bit of a clue, but apparently it wasn't really. So it, it's pretty interesting. For some reason, sometime around the 1880s or 1890s, snowmen became increasingly portrayed as alcoholics. And, what? And so by the early 1930s, by the, by the end of Prohibition, 
the snowman had become really commonplace in the ads for many alcohol um, producers, including Miller, Schlitz, Chivas Regal, and Jack Daniels. I can't imagine any situation in which I would have gotten that right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, in retrospect, and we're back to where I'm used to be. And... <laughs> but yeah, you can go, you can go online and, and see some of these uh, some of these uh, old advertisings that have like basically drunk, um, a boozed up snowman. Boozed up snowman, yeah. I mean, they would have a pipe in Wouldn't one hand and a, and a drink in the other. I was gonna say it, it, get, it warm me up on the inside, so I can see a snowman like well, not being a snowman anymore after like a few shots. It, I know? mean, it warm me up. It turns out that somebody wrote a book on the history of the snowman, and he says that this is the, in his opinion, the most interesting part of the snowman's life cycle um, or, or evolution, and even compared. He, he, he was comparing uh, the snowman during that period to W.C. Fields and how really? he's, not, he's not sure if one was copying the other or if they were kind of just evolving in the same parallel. But there's a lot of similarities between the, the snowman and W.C. Fields in that time. Huh. Question four, Frosty the Snowman. Let's talk about the actual TV special, Frosty the Snowman. What? Ha, cha, cha, cha. Man. What famous comedian was the narrator for the TV special? And for a bonus, what year was the show first aired? Um, locked in with two, I'm hoping, are very good guesses. I am locked in with two horrible guesses. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever actually seen that all the way through. Or at all. I, I, I've never seen it. I've seen it a lot. Well, the narrator is right at the beginning, so if you recognize and remember the voice, then you shouldn't should be able to get that one. I'm locked in. Okay, Emily. Uh, I said Dick Van Dyke in 1967. Okay, Kels. I said Bob Hope in 1961. Okay, and Bevo. I said Jimmy Durante. And 1972. All right. The correct answer was Jimmy Durante. And it first aired in 1969. Wow. I've never heard of that person. Me neither. You've seen caricatures of him. Have Probably. Did, did, well, Devo, oh. Devo just did a little... like the thing I, I, almost, I thought I gave it a... I thought I blew the question, honestly. I, I did too. <laughs> that only works if the other people have heard of him. That does help. <laughs> that does help. Yeah. How that, did you think you the, blew it? He's the he the caricatures you see of Jimmy Durante is a guy with a very big nose and kind of a a looping down nose, and he talks something like this. Ha cha cha cha. Yeah, okay. he's uh, sure. Yeah, I know. Yeah, or, I think yeah, or maybe they haven't seen it. <laughs> well, I watched way too many uh, Bugs Bunny cartoons in my day, I guess. All right. Round six. Santa Claus is coming to town. Question one. What is the name of the creepy, bloodthirsty Germanic alternative to Santa? Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. That was fast. Emily? Krampus. Devo. Krampus. With a K. Kells? Also with Krampus, a character I learned about on an episode of uh, American Dad. Two amazing musical numbers in that episode. Just saying. I'll take your word for it. The correct answer is Krampus. It's a good start to this round. Question mm -hmm. two. Many of the modern concepts we have about Santa come from a poem known today as The Night Before Christmas, although that wasn't the original uh, name it was published under. What decade was that poem originally published? I'll give you within one decade, either direction. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Kels? I went with 1920. Okay. Emily? 1880s. Devo? 1910s. 
All right. Emily was the closest, but still pretty far off. It was first published in the 1820s. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was pretty old. Okay, question three, and Santa Claus is coming to town. According to the Canadian Postal Service, what is Santa's postal code? I'll give you a hint about the Canadian Postal Service if you'd like one. Yes, please. Their postal codes are six characters, and they're always uh, alternating alphabetic, numeric, alphabetic, numeric, alphabetic, numeric. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. <laughs> Devo? I, I went with H0, H0, H0. Emily? I also said H0, H0, H0. What else? H0, H0, H, and then another zero. Correct answer is H0, H. Zero H zero. All right. Question four. The last question in our regular round. What U.S. military organization tracks Santa's progress through the U.S. airspace since the 1950s? Locked in. Locked in. I'm locked in. Kels? Probably going to regret this, but I said the Air Force. Okay. Emily? I said NORAD. Devo? I said the Air Force. The correct answer is NORAD. They have a website. They used to have a, I think it was, they would show something on TV and have regular checkups. I think several networks do the same kind of thing now. The final scores. This is a victory for you, Neil. We're all under 100. <laughs> Kells and Davo have 90. Emily, with a surge at the end there, has 84. Start strong and strong. So we have a final question. I'm going to tell you what the category is, and you can make your wagers based on what the hint that I give you here. The category is 12 days. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm locked in. This is the worst part for me. I am locked in. All right. Your task for the final question is to name all 12 of the gifts from the 12 days of Christmas, including the number. And I need you to get oh. nine of them to get full credit. <laughs> My logic for that was that basically the first five should pretty much be gimmies for everybody. So then you just need to get four of the final three or four of the final seven. I'm locked in. I can't remember 10. I want to thank John Denver and the Muppet Christmas special for helping me with that answer. <laughs> because when all their voices are different in your head, it makes it a lot easier to remember. So you sound pretty confident, Dave. I feel pretty good about it. I, I listened, that was my favorite Christmas stuff when I was a child was the Muppets Christmas. And I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Specific. So, starting at the top, 12 drummers drumming. Yes. Got it. Nope. 11 pipers piping. Yes. Got it. No. 10 lords a-leaping. Yes. Uh -uh. Nope. 9 ladies dancing. Yep. Uh -uh. Nope. Eight maids of milking. Yes. Yes. Seven swans of swimming. Yes. Mm -hmm. Six geese a laying. Yep. Can we do it together? Sure. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Start us off, Kels. Five, Five gold, gold and gold rings. rings. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> we should practice on. Why don't you just write? No, we should. You... We got to get together. <laughs> Why don't you just write down the last four? Because I bet everybody got those right. Who me? Yeah. 
uh, four Colin birds, three French hens, uh, two uh, turtle doves, and a uh, partridge. I believe it's in a pear tree. Thank you, Obama. That's correct, Mr. President. Mr. President, thank you. <laughs> Obama out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kels, how many did you get? I have 10. All right. Emily? I got eight. <gasps> oh, no. The last four always yeah. get it mushy to me. Oh, man. Dave, you did got you them all. I got them perfect? all. Right. I got them all. <laughs> of course. All right. So, Emily, what was your wager? 60. It leaves you with 24. Else? I bet the whole shebang. I yeah. bet 90. Eva? I also bet the whole shebang. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. It's a tie. What do we do now? Okay. So, since we have a tie, I have come up with a tiebreaker question. It's going to be a dollar amount, and whoever gets closest, whether it's more or less, doesn't matter, will win today's contest. So I'm looking at how much Americans spent on Christmas in 2017, oh, no. according to the National Retail Federation. So on average, how much did Americans spend for items such as decorations, gifts, and festive foodstuffs during the holiday season, not including travel expenses? So this, this is, is per family? Um, or taking the total and dividing it by the population of the country? I suspect the, the latter. Okay. What are you looking for now? How much did the average American spend for items such as decorations, gifts, and festive foodstuffs during the holiday season, according to the National Retail Federation? I've got an answer. I also have an answer. Okay. Eva, what's your answer? I believe we spent $9,500 per person. Okay. Kels? Wow, that's a lot. I I said six hundred and one dollars. Yeah, I don't really have to do the math there. The I think it might be eight fifty. Emily was the closest. Uh, doesn't matter for her, but the according to the National <laughs> Retail Federation, average <laughs> Americans spend an average of nine hundred and sixty-seven dollars. I win. Oh, my! I was off. Oh. By a factor of something. I was off. Oh. You were off by a magnitude. <laughs> yeah. I was off by one magnitude because I wanted to get up over a billion. Oh, piss a diddle. Oh, the total is about, according to this, about $680 billion. Well, congratulations, Kells. I don't know what scale is, so you win. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <Damo. laughs> I thought I won. <laughs> you won my heart. Aww. I'll take that. And I would just like to say, from all of us here at the Brain Ladle family, happy holidays. Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. Joyous Yule. Joyous Yule, Samhain forever, Festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> whatever you celebrate, celebrate it with lots of wassail and a lot of love. <laughs> Check us out on Facebook. We have a Patreon. Hit us up there. Be sure to listen to our dear friends at the Trivia Rogues podcast. They are good guys, and we're giving them a shout out for Christmas to help those numbers go up, up, up. And hopefully we can get together with them again. So from all of us, oh, wait, I nearly forgot. Kells, you nearly let me forget. Uh, got, yeah, I got a bad habit of that. Yeah, we got a, we got some fans and a patron we'd like to... Say hi to Susan L. Merry Christmas. We love you very much. We got Lexi. We got Liz. We got Allison. And the littlest ladler of all. We got all <laughs> sorts of good stuff. Is there anything you'd like to say for your for Christmas shout outs? You're all awesome. Happy Christmas. 
Would you like to say anything? Would you like to shout out anybody, Kells? Uh, just uh, m- my family out there, um, everybody's family. Just be safe traveling. If you, if you are traveling, if you're not traveling, just enjoy enjoy everybody's company. Or if you're alone, enjoy your own company. <laughs> be happy. Neil, you have some some shouting out you want to do? Nobody in particular. I just want to appreciate all of our all of our listeners. Well, thank you all for helping us get through 2018. And we're looking forward to 2019 as well. So from all of us here at Brain Ladle, this is Devo with Emily. Good night, everybody. Kells. You keep jingling, Chewbacca. And and Neil. Devo, you're a three-decker sauerkraut and toadstool sandwich with arsenic sauce. (laughs) Mm, Thanks. (laughs) Signing off. (laughs) The preceding podcast was presented by Brain Ladle Productions. All rights reserved. I would do really terrible at my own quizzes. Because I don't know, I don't know any of this stuff before I looked it up. I think my upstairs neighbor's about a horse. I'm a golden freaks. Ba dum bum bum. <laughs> <laughs>